Getting ready to work on the Daytona Shelby. I've got everything I need to start replacing every line in the car. So here's the power steering line that had blown. I've got uh, both front rubber lines, the brake lines. These were on a wholesale or closeout. They were like $2.50 a piece, like $2.50 each. So why wouldn't you buy those? And uh, then there's a rear rubber line. It's just a single one. Then I've got, showed it in a previous video, but I've got all this tubing. I've got 5 sixteenths for the fuel line, quarter inch for the return line, and 3 sixteenths for all the brake lines. Bunch of hose clamps just because I needed them. But to start out, I've got to get it up in the air, and I've got to get the wheels and tires off it anyways because I, uh, I'm getting brand new tires for it tomorrow. And I was going to refinish the wheels before I put tires on, but I'm just going to have to do them after. It's a lot easier to let somebody else mount and dismount the tires. and I'm capable of doing it, but I got a wicked deal. <laughs> 160 bucks for all four tires, mounted and balanced. So, brand new tires. Just some economy, cheap things. I'm not even sure what brand they are, but... For brand new tires, 160 bucks, I'll do it. So, let me get this thing jacked up and get these wheels off it. Well, it's the next day. I didn't get a whole lot done yesterday. Um, took a break for dinner and then lost interest. But So, it's up in the air. Wheels and tires are all off it. I've got the brand new tires installed on the wheels. I'll show you those in a second. That was a smoking deal I got on those. Um... I did get one power steering line off. That's not one of the main lines, but there's a main pressure line to the rack from the pump, and then there's a return line, and then there's also two lines that go across the rack, and that's one of the two. And I'm going to replace both of those. Uh, you can't see up in there very well. But yeah, it's not a fun spot, and it's also a really dirty job because the line blew, and it blew power steering everywhere. So, I am going to, I also picked up some more toys, more goodies. So I bought these uh, new shocks for the rear, because these ones are toast. Not only are they, you know, rotted out at the tops, but they're also junk. The car, you can bounce it pretty good. So I'll be putting those on there. I also went and got some, some brake fluid. Some power steering fluid and a whole mess of fittings. I was going to try to save some money and reuse the fittings that I take off, and I've done that plenty of times, but I was able to score a pretty good deal on these. I guess these fittings are normally like four bucks a piece, three to four dollars a piece, and I got them for like a dollar fifty each. So it's not worth me. Uh, Drilling out the old lines and such on ones that don't want to work that the line doesn't come out of for a dollar so One thing that's kind of bad is this rear hose. I got I think that's actually a rear hose for a car that has drum brakes and this one as you know has Disc brakes in the rear, so that's not gonna work for me So some of the stuff that I know I'm gonna be taking apart. I am gonna hit with some PB blaster stuff's awesome Way better than using, uh, say, WD-40 or whatever. So, up here, just give it a little soak. I'm going to hit my lines. I'm going to do that everywhere on the car for everything I'm taking off. See how scaly it is under here and everything. I'll probably be cleaning stuff up a little bit as I go to. And now for the tires. These are still in the back of my truck. But I thought I should share this because this was such a deal. I got all four of these mounted and balanced. Brand new tires. Uh, I don't even know the name of them. Crosswind HP. Ling Long. Most likely they're made in China. But for 160 bucks, mounted and balanced, you can't really go wrong. 
they're obviously not a performance tire but so the reason I got them at that price is the cheapest tires on Town Fair Tire, which is where I got these, were listed for 66 bucks each. And that was without mount and balancing. And on Walmart, they had a really cheap tire for $40 each. And that also wasn't with mount and balancing. So on Town Fair Tire's website, they have a little spot you can click that says, found it cheaper. And so I clicked that. It asks for how much are the tires that you're looking at. So I put in the $40 each. Um, how much is the total shipped? And that was 100 and, 160 because it, uh, there was free shipping. And they want you to link the website that you use. So I put in the Walmart website. Well, right away, like instantly, this wasn't even done by a person. It was done by a computer. Uh, Town Fair Tire gets right back and says, we can beat their price by like it might have been like a dollar or two but with installation mountain balance new valve stems and uh removal of disposal of the old tires so i basically got these installed for like half price of what town fair tire would have done if i would have just went directly to them so i thought you guys might find that interesting i i try to try to get deals on everything i buy i uh you know, when you add up everything I'm putting into that car, if you can save a bit of money here and there, it really makes a big difference in the end. What I'm doing now is I'm pulling all the calipers off. Probably pull this bracket too. And uh, I'm going to bead blast them and paint them. And I mean, you could I could have easily bought new calipers, but these are fine. I collapsed this caliper completely with it still on the car with a screwdriver. I should probably show you how I do that. What I do is I have this caliper here I've already done. I've already done all of them, but I'll show you anyways. So you've got these vented slots, and even when you don't have these, you can still do this. So you can get down in this hole and get the screwdriver in there and just kind of pull. And collapse the caliper before you even try to take it off makes it a lot easier so especially if you had like a worn lip so that your pads are already loose and you can go ahead and remove that caliper really nice and easily sorry about all the movement but so the other thing I'm gonna do is believe it or not as bad as these rotors look to start off with I think I'm gonna reuse them I'm going to bead blast these as well, front and rear. The rears look worse in the front. Let me show you the front. So the fronts are just a little bit of rust, not nearly as bad. And they may clean up, we'll see. And uh, if they don't, I'll buy new rotors, not a big deal. But if I buy new rotors, I'm buying new pads as well. But for now, it's not like a critical thing and it's something I can easily do later. And so I'm really focused on doing what I have to do. So I have to do the brake lines. If I have to do the brake lines, I might as well remove the calipers and paint them. And so that's where we're at. Great progress is being made. I've got the calipers and rotors off on all four wheels. Got really lucky and the uh, rotors came off really easy once you get these factory clips off. Somebody probably had this dealer serviced because most people would never put these back on and usually they wouldn't even come with new rotors. So what these do is they, they're kind of retaining clips and they just temporarily hold the rotor until you get the wheel bolted on. So I've got all my, my calipers nice and dirty and rusty and scaly. They're all kind of just sitting up there draining. I've decided that I can't bring myself to reuse these pads. Even though there's a ton of meat left on them, with how rusted they are, I don't trust the adherence of the pad to the metal. And so I will be putting on all new pads all the way around. I probably should be doing all new rotors all around, but I'm not going to. At least not for starters. I'm going to show you uh, what I'm going to do with these. And some of you will be really critical of what I'm going to do. And some of you might say, hey, great idea. But... In either case, I'll show you what I'm going to do.
Even the uh, the rear rotors, which I said are a little bit worse in the front, came right off. And they actually, the, these are the uh, the shoes back here are for the e-brake. And believe it or not, with as bad as everything else is on this car, the e-brake works. Which is really good, because I wouldn't have had any brakes whatsoever if it wasn't for the e-brake. And so moving around the yard and getting it back in the garage here, I needed the e-brake. So I was afraid the first time I pulled it, because sometimes you pull uh, an old e-brake and it, it might work once, and then it might not return. And so you're stuck with your brakes being locked up. So I'm going to clean up those the calipers. I'm definitely reusing these because there's nothing wrong with them at all. Just They look bad now, but they'll look great when I'm done. Clean up everything in here. Get off all the scaly rust. Blow everything out. Paint everything up as good as I can. All the way around. You'll notice I haven't been showing you too much of the, the rot under the car yet because that's not the focus right now and I don't want to scare you guys off. Just trust me that I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Famous last words. So, same thing here. You know, rotor came right off. Calipers draining. Pads were like new as far as how much pad is left, but just too rusty for me. Can't trust them. Uh, the rotors aren't a safety hazard. If anything, they might pulse, and if they do, I'll put on new rotors. But the pads, I feel like, are a safety concern. And when it comes to safety, I, I really don't cheapen out. I, I try to be cheap when I can, but if it comes to safety, I'm not going to. So what I did is I, uh, I hit all the calipers with a little bit of brake clean. And so I have this... This bolt here, it's a seatbelt bolt that fits perfectly in the uh, what would be the brake line. And I just hit them with a little bit of brake clean to try to get as much of the brake fluid off of it as I could before I bead blast it because I don't want to contaminate all the bead or all the glass in the bead blaster with uh, brake fluid. So in here I've got one that I just started attempting to clean up. It wasn't in here very long at all. It's cleaning up okay, but I have a major problem, and that is you can't see in here at all. <laughs> so it makes it really hard to do a nice job when you can't see anything. And it's really probably time to replace this panel, but I think I can fix it myself. I'm going to sand that out, buff it up, polish it. Make it nice and clear again. All right, so I got my plexiglass here. I just kind of washed it down real quick. Um, you can see through it, but if it's in that box, you can't you can't see through that. So I've got some thousand grit sandpaper. Got some uh, soapy water. What I'm gonna do? Is sand it down. Some of you might be wondering if this is going to work, and uh, you're not alone. I'm wondering too. I've never done it, so we'll see. <laughs> Let's find out together if this will actually clear up. So I'm going to be sanding it like, a, like I'd buff a car, basically. And I'm going to put the camera down, and I'll show you when I'm done with thousand. And my hands are dirty, and it's coming off on that, so that's probably not ideal, but we're going to run with it. All right. So I ended up doing both sides with a thousand grit because after I got one side done, I realized my father's probably flipped this once when it got really bad on one side. So it was kind of bad on both sides. So now I have some 1500 grit paper, super smooth. You don't even feel the abrasive on it. And this is used. This is a worn piece, so it might not work that good. And if it doesn't, I'll go grab a new piece, but I just assume use it. And... <laughs> yeah. I think it's actually cutting. Let me finish this up and I'll uh, show you how it came out. Alright, the 1500's done. You can see it's 
it's getting a little bit better, but still not very clear at all. So now I have a Trizac diamond cut, also a used piece. I hold on to this because uh, when I do a, a car and I buff and paint it and everything, it's very expensive. I can't remember how much it was, but it's pretty expensive per piece. And I wouldn't use it again on a car, but I'd use it on something like this. I have a feeling this is going to work very well. Now I don't know if you can tell, but if you look at the, the slurry, this is cutting very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do both sides of this and then I'll show you how it's going. Now, cause I don't wanna use anything I really care about. I'm gonna use this dirty old foam pad. Um, I'm gonna use some of my Meguiar's foam cut. You know, this I do care about, but it's not gonna hurt it to use a little bit of it. And I am gonna buff it. Cause it's not clear enough for me. We want clear and this isn't clear. And this doesn't want to come out. So the uh, the spout in this thing was kind of jammed up, so I just dumped a little dollop of it right on there. And I'm just gonna. I also sprayed some water on here, or soapy water. And I'm not gonna be able to show you this because I can't I can't hold and do this at the same time, hold the camera. So let me do one side. We'll see how it goes, and I'll sh see what I show you. As you can see, it looks much, much better. You can actually see through it now, but I'm still not satisfied. I want it to be clearer than that. So I am gonna try one more product and we will see how it does. Metal polish. Metal polish works great on plastic. If you wanna take uh, and like renew headlights, the ones that always kind of fog over or get you know kind of brown or whatever, metal polish is the way to go. It works awesome. It's kind of a temporary fix though. For some reason it doesn't last a long time, but let's give that a go. All right, well, here's what we got. It's not perfect. It's not crystal clear like we were going for, but it will work, I think. Let's get it mounted up and see if we can actually see what we can see. Hey, would you look at that? Nowhere near perfect, but I can see. Before, I couldn't see anything at all, and now I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm happy with that. That will work, good enough. Really should get a new piece of plexiglass for it, I guess. Or somebody who's better at polishing it up. I got one of the four calipers all cleaned up, right here. And see the difference? That's a front one, that's a front one. Rusty clean so I wasn't going for perfection you know just clean them up and then I'll uh, prime them paint them and I'll seal them up with a uh, actual automotive clear coat because that makes a huge difference on calipers it it lasts forever and uh, if you get any brake fluid on it it doesn't eat through it like it does spray paint but you can use just regular spray paint on on the caliper itself and then just cover it in an automotive clear coat. Maybe tomorrow I'll show that process if I get that far. I'll also show a few more things tomorrow. But for tonight, I think this might be it. So that's gonna do it for tonight. Sorry I didn't make a ton of progress. Got a little sidetracked cleaning up that uh, plexiglass so I could actually see. But you can see I'm making progress. Um, Tomorrow, I'll hopefully make a whole lot more progress and show you some things that maybe you didn't know how to do. Making brake lines, things like that. Could be doing some more cleaning up, more painting. If this stuff interests you, if you think that this video was interesting, please hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications of when I make new videos. And continue on because this is gonna be one heck of a project. Like I, I said earlier, there's some rot in this car, and I'm going to be 
completely cleaning that up, cutting it out, welding in new, new metal, painting the whole car. So it's going to be a heck of a project. And when, I, when I'm all done, I think this is going to be one of the nicest examples of a 91 Daytona Shelby. So we'll see what you guys think when I'm done, but that's what I think is going to happen. So hope you enjoyed. Tom Brady is getting ready to play some football. It's his third preseason game. And in the third game, the starters play most of the time. And I'm from New England, and when you're from New England, when Tom Brady plays football, you watch. So that's why I'm cutting this night a little bit early. So thanks for watching, guys.